What's up, all you nerds and turds? It's me, it's Steve, it's him, it's Andy, and this is Indie's Nuts Podcast, the internet's number one indie game reviews, previews, and news podcast hosted by people you've never heard of. Probably the show posts each and every week on your favorite podcast service of choice, including our home, Podbean. And of course, you can watch live twitch.tv slash dual screen streams, youtube.com slash dual screens TV. Andy, how the hell are you? I am booking an interview as we speak. Booking an interview as we speak. Plus, I've had a very emotional couple of days. What What are you booking an interview for? Oh, for a game called Gunscape? No, no, no. For what's the purpose of the interview? Oh, for the show we do? Oh, the, oh, the <laughs> other podcast we do? The <laughs> Dual Screens Podcast? The Internet's number one indie developer interview podcast hosted by people you've yes, never heard that of? One. That That's one. right. Every single week we post a, an interview with an indie developer. You could go check that one out. If this is your first time listening to anything dual screens, please consider doing that. It's on our same YouTube channel uh, and you could look for it on your favorite podcast service of choice as well. But ladies and gentlemen, we right now it's me and Andy. Uh, Matt is having Internet issues. He may join us in the middle of the show. We'll see what happens. Uh, but we have to talk about all sorts of indie games. But before we do, let's talk about our Patreon because that is the best way ding dong bing bong goodbye sir hello oh, matt's here matt is here the number one way that you could support us is through patreon.com slash dual screens that's all you got to do is go there and uh for as little as one dollar you get a bunch of bonus content and all sorts of fun stuff uh welcome matt how are you doing buddy oh you know <laughs> the interwebs is being a big old bitch I just want you guys both to know that I still have hard disk drives in my computer. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. That's what wow. I'm working with right now. My One choice? By, uh, by lack of monetary uh, allotment. Uh, you to you could sell go plasma. to patreon.com to help yes, us. Yes. Patreon.com slash dual screens. <laughs> we'll we'll bring Matt to the single-handedly year. fund Matt's upgrades on his computer, please, for the love of God. Speaking of <laughs> upgrades, we're going to PAX East and we're bringing... All kinds of upgrades with us. All thanks to you on patreon.com slash dual screens. We uh, we got some new equipment, new recording equipment. Very exciting. We're Very shooting exciting. a movie. <laughs> We're, yeah. there. We're shooting a movie. That's right. <laughs> it's 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 all going to happen. Um, all right, folks, let's get into uh, the show proper. But and the first thing we like to do is touch base with dual screens .com. Andy, what the hell's new on dual screens .com? We have things happening on dual screens .com. We do. Listen, new year, first set of eyes, new energy. We're going to crush it in 2023. Uh, we listed our games of the year, 2022, and our indie games of the year, 2022. Mm -hmm. And I want to shout out to uh, Mikey Kirsch for pointing out my horrible grammar. <laughs> That's sections. not. That's not. I'm, Andy, that is not grammar. That is straight up gobbledygook. He for pointing out when I have, when, pointing out my stroke while I'm typing. Yeah, that hands. that was that. I like that was a medical emergency. Listen, <laughs> listen. Like I said, as I'm writing, I get better line ideas. So I keep typing and I stop, and I keep going. Oh my god, I remember I, you I, doing I that. I, I don't go back. That's what I do. Yeah, I'm. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I, I'm notorious for it. Yeah, so your, much. So your much. brain goes faster than your fingers, or vice yep. versa, or whatever. Mm -hmm. it um, just keeps going. Yeah. yeah. So we took a collaborative approach to our game, our year end articles and and decisions. The, you can't. We're a group of individuals. We're not one entity that's going to vote on what because we all play different stuff. We all like different stuff. So we are. We all picked what our what our games of the year were what our favorite moments were and you're going to start seeing all of those articles go up um because this uh, dual screens is about showing love to, to video games it's not about you know picking winners and arguing and you know whatever so go check those out on dualscreens.com um give us your clicks i don't know if i like it but we could see exactly how many people are looking at our shit and sharing our shit now it's a little weird um <laughs> like right there on the page i mean we could like not have that there i, yeah. I kind of I like i kind of like it too but we can no longer tell people how, uh to get press passes how how many uh <laughs> clicks we get we have our hands turn it off for a few months between turn it off for a few bean and youtube and then the <laughs> website 
it's all it's all it's an aggregate it's an aggregate it's all it's all please support us tell your friends this is the best podcast you'll ever listen to all right let's get into the indie game adventures we do have stuff that we want to talk about um why don't i kick us off to get the ball rolling i played a couple of games today i i played a game that's coming out sometime next week i believe it's on the on the 19th it's called gatekeeper eclipse um this is going to be a free-to-play um action roguelike uh tower defense sort of um it's got all the keywords but they have one glaring and i mean glaring issue with the game Uh oh the game plays well it looks good Uh uh-huh i i can i understand the energy of it there is no indication of what you're supposed to do no indication on how upgrades work no indication of how um there so i started in and it says defend the gate so i'm walking around and i see these little enemy icons so like that's where the enemies are coming from right it's a tower defense the enemies are coming in waves in different spots you have a right a left click which is your regular gun which has a very short range and then you have like this bomb that you could throw and it blows everything up um you could dash a little bit and you know all that stuff then there's this like spire this like small it's a small spire but it has these two little circles on it and you go up to it and it's like press e to take the thing so i'm like all right e i take the thing and it's like here's a bonus and i'm like okay what do i do <laughs> they're like they're like standing they're like in the, the there's two of them in the machine i'm like do i pick one so i go to them and there's no prompt to do anything so i walk away and all of a sudden there's this like little roomba thing following me around attacking enemies i'm like Where did this come? Like, how do I get this? How did I, how did I unlock this? Because all I did was walk to the spire and press E. I have no idea if it was because I killed enough enemies, if it's timed, if it's, I have no clue. Um, and like the third wave is like ridiculously difficult. And I don't funny if it just started flashing like high score on the screen. It, like, I mean, no, there's no indication of any numbers anywhere. It's just like high score. Yeah. I mean, well, there you get at, when you die, there's like all the stats on the side and it's like, OK, well, like what like what am I doing? Like, I understand I have to kill all the enemies, but like, how do I get more power? How do I like what is there? Do I have is to it, go ahead? Is it like arcadey? Like, what's the it is. But there's there's these it's weird because there's so the other mode that you can play is literal tower defense. There's these towers that you have to um, defend them until they reach a hundred percent charge. I don't know if the tower is giving me benefits because it doesn't say anything on the screen. There's these blue lights that if you walk into them, they come out of the, uh, out of the tower, there's these blue lights, you touch them and you get hurt. But it also hurts the enemy. So I'm like, okay, so I guess this is like what happens in the tower area. There's like a big circle around, around the tower. So that you're like in there defending. There's these enemies that just pop up out of nowhere that like kamikaze you and blow up. There's these enemies that are towers with lasers could shoot you halfway across the the board. I'm like, okay. And then there's that power up thing that I mentioned in the, in the other mode, but it's like 200 yards away. I'm like, I I'm supposed to leave the tower go over there, get a power up, come all the way back, but you can't really run. And if you're firing your gun, you can only run if you're not doing anything. So like these enemies just are bombarding the tower while I'm trying to run and get a power up because all you have is your bomb, which has a five second recharge and your gun, which has, if you're looking at your computer screen, it has like four inches of range. Like Mm -hmm. you can't just shoot them from far away. Like you have to get somewhat close to them. So it was, it just left, like, I just needed information. Like, give me a fucking tutorial. Do you know if, if it's going to be like an early access game or it's like a full it's a release? It's a full game? release free to play. <clears throat> it's going to have, it has three uh, main, like, uh, you're supposed to, like, uh, put these hearts back in this thing. I, it, it, the story was like three sentences, so I can't even, like, tell you really what you're supposed <laughs> to do. But there's essentially three areas that you need to clear as of right now so there's um i could get the um i could open the the press kit just so i could read exactly what what you're getting with this when it when it opens uh when it starts so there's there's three uk uh locations a thousand enemies will rush you in order to steal the heart of time i guess that's what you're protecting uh various gates and shields to defend from waves of enemies there's a new mechanic enemies will emerge from the portals i don't know what that means um 
if you clear if you don't clear the location of all enemies, they'll follow you to the next level. So, uh, okay, cool. I never got past the first like third wave of enemies, so I have no idea what they're talking about. Um, free skills on each level. Don't know how to get them. They don't show you. Um, they they don't they just they just don't they just don't tell you. Um, I'm so glad you're telling us about this game that you're like ambivalent about. I, I just wish. <laughs> so I mean, it, it's we just and we you're have the to... summer's time of the show. Up. <laughs> well, that, this is what the show's about, isn't it? It's about indie games. <laughs> it Pe- is. People may see it's free to play, and they're gonna want to jump in. And I'm telling mm-hmm. the developers, you gotta make a god a GD tutorial so we know what the hell we're doing. Like yeah, it's just fair. it's just not it's not fun to just wander around and die because you don't know what the hell's going on um just like real life just like real life guys it's just like real life um anyway that's i mean i could show show it on the screen if you i drop oh that's so loud it's time to hold up that is so loud (laughs) it was just i'm not saying that you're doing a disservice to everybody steve it just like it went from like yeah i play this pretty all right game it's fucking terrible it's no, it's just, it's just it's just so bad. Just here, need, like they I don't tell you anything. I don't know what the story here's the is. thing. You put some I, hearts in some things. I don't it's the heart of the world. I don't it, hate it. I they, just it is, they it's just only four inches big, man. I don't are you sure you don't hate? I don't. It? I hate the fact that there's no tutorial. That's what I hate. Yeah, that's fair. okay. Fair that's what I hate. Yeah. Um, let me see if I can do this thing. Two people, pre- three people preview pain. Okay, here we go. Oh the god, it, it's all it's, it's all this inches. is all messed up. I'm not do. gonna do this. Fuck it. It's all messed up. I'm not gonna bother with that. I, I never work. set it up because because your friggin' computer kept screwing up. What anyway, else are you playing, Steve? Look it up. Um no no no, let's kick it to somebody else. Let's kick it uh Matt, what have you been playing? Uh I have been digging into Undermine, which is a roguelike game that's oh. been out for quite some time. Yeah, Undermine's uh, good. I've I've heard of it. Yeah. Yeah, it's a really good time. Uh, you know, I don't know why I put it off for so long. It was on Game Pass for quite a while, and um, mm. now that I've dug into it on my Switch, um, it has kind of consumed my life a little bit. Like, if I have a 15 to 20 minutes, I'll literally just pick up my Switch and do a run. Um, you are a unending line of gnomes who are, like, not slaves <laughs> to... Uh, forced, this- forced labor. <clears throat> Yeah, uh, you know, like not slaves to this uh, creepy old wizard guy and you're going down to this mine and uh, area by area kind of clearing it out, fighting bosses and getting to the next areas. Uh, I like all that. All kinds of cool synergies. I um, like that. One of the cooler things about it uh, that a lot of roguelikes and games like this don't have is that there's a jump as opposed to a dodge. And so like there are like gaps in the floor that you'll fall through, but you can jump over them and then there are powers that you'll get which will let you to double jump and uh, do all kinds of stuff. So you get like a power stomp. Um, but uh, yeah, I've been having a really good time with it. Uh, the upgrade tree is like, get as much gold as you can. When you die, you lose uh, a certain percentage of your goal. The more you upgrade your guy, you can upgrade like uh, swing strength. You can upgrade uh, your backpack so you can hold more gold when you die, your health. And then you can actually throw your pickaxe. Um, and there's all kinds of synergies that go uh, into the game, like a lot of other roguelikes. But uh, the throwing action is the most fun I've had in a video game in a long time because there are so many different items that modify it. Uh, and for whatever reason, I, the RNG keeps handing me uh, items that modify it. And so like, it'll be like, all right, when you throw it and it hits something, like it'll bounce between four other enemies. But then also I have one that will like create a ghost pickaxe every time i hit an enemy so i just have like one axe bouncing between a bunch of enemies then the ghost axe is bouncing between enemies and then it's like oh you also have lightning power so like you do that and then they all get shocked and it just turns into this like really cool screen filling like yeah holy shit what am i even looking at right now i just annihilated a whole room in like two throws uh sounds it sounds like they could probably take the wizard you know what i mean Pro- I think probably they, they, eventually you'll yeah. take the wizard. Uh, yeah. I've gotten down to like the third level of mm. the mine. Uh, Spooky. The bosses are awesome. The bosses are like so fun to fight. Uh, the first one is like this worm thing. Uh, the second one is this giant like electrified golem. Uh, is there a tutorial to tell you what you're supposed to do in the game? There are several tutorials. Oh, wow. That That's great. Every system that pops up <laughs> oh, in the game. That's awesome. Um, yeah, there's a bunch of different NPCs that are all very interesting. Congratulations uh, for finding a game with a tutorial in the beginning to tell you what to do. The old wizard guy I was not as lucky. telling you that you're not a slave. Um, 
but you like pick people up along the way that uh, fulfill different stations in like the hub world, uh, like the hub above the mine. Uh, hub above them. Hubba bubba? If you need to be told you're not a slave, you're most certainly a slave. <laughs> yeah, no, it's really funny. I laugh every time. Yeah, you're totally like not a slave. And the guy that just died, he wasn't a slave either. Uh, he just happened to get in some trouble down there. So right. why don't you go down? I mean, you guys could leave right now. All you have to do is cross that crocodile infested moat. It's well, up to you. <laughs> the funnier part is like the the like the the main splash screen is just like a constant conga line of different miners like walking into the mine and like just it's just never ending and so you just know like i'm gonna go do my work today and i'll go find bob he's been missing for a week hey mr <laughs> wizard man what you say I'm what, what are you mining thing. for gold just just uh, gold like this wizard just wants gold gold <laughs> wizard just wants some gold wow uh, but what a, what a piece uh, of shit he is i know well i mean there's other things that haven't been revealed to me yet like there's definitely some kind of mystery that's going on with this mine and uh i'm not doing a particularly good job uh mining the gold for this guy because every time i come back up i'm buying new upgrades for my guy and i'm not even giving him any of the gold um is that so a mechanic sure... like you can give it to him not at all oh so <laughs> like the worst slave this ever. Is, i mean it's, it sounds like the worst boss ever like what are you doing it's like all right i am forcing you go down there get as much gold as possible spend it on yourself and don't you dare try and leave <laughs> don't you give me any you treat yourself but also you can't go home <laughs> this uh, is your yeah. home you live in this cave now it's a really good time. The pixel art is beautiful. Uh, the soundtrack is really great. Uh, I've been bumping along with it uh, for a while. And um, check it out if you can find it on streaming services. Uh, it's definitely definitely worth a listen. Um, but yeah, if you want to infinitely mine gold with a lineage of uh, dwarven people who don't seem to mind not being slaves, uh, play Undermine. Uh, it also was on sale for like seven ninety nine when I picked it up. I'm not sure what it is. Undermine. You know what I learned just now? I have heard the word synergies come out of Matt's face more than any other human being I love I've encountered. Roguelikes. It's the I game mechanic roguelikes. that he loves in my life. I do. Know? I love. I just love. I love. We need like a synergy shot. Like just synergy. drink when Matt says synergies. <laughs> I know it's the worst. I just love different items working together. My favorite thing is when a game has like mutations where if you get like a specific amount of synergies mm -hmm. it like transforms you into something into else like something isaac cool, yeah. isaac started that for me and then ravita kind of picked up that uh it, that whole thing because in your little ravita blurb you say the word synergies of course i do <laughs> of course. you can't talk about roguelikes without talking about synergies <laughs> synergistic synergistic, synergistic mm -hmm. power-ups mm -hmm. remember last week you couldn't Syn say that word? synergenetic couldn't say it couldn't it's say like it's like Matt had like word of the day, and I was like, "That's all I need. I'm done. No more. No more for me. Just the one. This I just is need the one day. This is the word. I'm, I'm stopping here." Andy. Andy. Yes. Andy. Tell me about your meat. <laughs> oh, guys. So I found the game the other day. Um, it's also the deal of the week too. So you can <gasps> go into that if you want. Dun, dun, dun. Meat madness. Indie so I, deal I, of the I, week. I, I week, came week. across a game called the Beat Madness. Meat Madness, which mm -hmm. is not at all a Bukaki simulator whatsoever. Um, but it is, in fact, a game about a planet made of meat. And your job is to go down a hole. Oh, my God. It's actually ground in this, beef. In this meat planet and get meat. Now, so, it sounds like an okay time. Sounds like Undermine, except meat. But <laughs> are you the, a not slave? The creepy part about this oh, game. Oh, this is gross. Got, it, it's got the lo-fi PS1 shit that I love so much, the crunchy graphics, is mm. as you're going down each platform lower into the core of the meat planet you'll find things like people trapped in meat uh-huh and they'll be like like this like arms and heads sticking out of the meat thank you i hate and it they'll be, and they'll be like oh my god thank god you're here i've been stuck for like five years you're here to save me but then you're like you leave them and just go further down the meat shaft <laughs> and they're like what the fuck you going bro i'm stuck in the meat <laughs> and you're just going down this endless so Total of me is it is it like Steven. towerfall no Steven. not towerfall uh can you can you pull up the Steam page for this and i just look am at, i'm looking you at need it to look at it no and just look at the <laughs> let's see one two three four five the fifth picture in is literally just like 
a mesh 3D warped stock picture of ground beef for sure. A hundred percent. Dude, they, that is they literally really what it used, is. Oh, That's yeah. That's what they used. That was like the texture pack. It's like just yeah. the trade fair, took a snapshot. Cool. This is the whole texture of the entire game. Sounds like head die, says Mark. It's not, it's, not, it's not even a, like a great game. I just, I just, I, I couldn't put it down for like all of the two hours it took me to beat it. But it this came just... out in November. It had, yeah. Can I, can I read the, the description of this game? Yes, please go right ahead. A short 3D narrative driven horror platformer mm-hmm. journey deep into the meat tunnel and talk with survivors <laughs> to uncover the grim truth. <clears throat> you guys, and it's free to play. Come on. Steven, Certainly a steal. This belongs on your Steam Deck. You need it. You need it for those nighttime plays. I you need to journey to the meat. I tunnel, Steve. have never been more confident in me not needing to play something <laughs> than Meat Madness. I am Although get I this appreciate it. I'm I great. I would love to talk to him about Meat Madness. Does I don't think I'm going to play Meat Madness. The um, developer's name is Duke Gobbler. Oh, what no. else would his that name is be? not <laughs> real anyway uh so my next game here is a demo that i played of a game coming out in Love april you, um it is also on my indie game watch because it, it was promising it has some work that it needs to do but it's called a stencil mm-hmm. um i'm going to put this in the chat right meow um a stencil is a more actiony take on the souls type kind of uh genre but it's not it's definitely a double a if not single a um kind of foray into that um this is a game that i could see um getting iterated on and and getting better but the fact that they have um, that it's going to release in April. It's probably not going to hit that core audience very hard because mm-hmm. it, it, it's it's lacking. Again, this is another one that like, you know how Elden Ring and Bloodborne, they don't really tell you what items do, but at least you know where you like how to use them to kind of find out. Um, mm-hmm. But this game's con- control scheme is very poor. Um, that was really my, my main issue with it. Um it ru- it ran well. I really like the art style. Like it's it's simple. It's almost like a PS one style game, but like with higher res textures. That like that's kind of like what it feels like. Low quality, um, high quality. Yeah, like that's what it, that's what it felt like. Um, the uh, the targeting system works except for when you're trying to use the right stick to kind of move around and circle them. Like you don't when you lock onto them, you don't square up with them as as the character but the camera squares up with them so you'll be like turning your body away from the enemy even though they're locked on and if you turn your body too much you'll snap and lock on to the to something else that it that that you know your hmm. character comes closer to so like that's like i would just work on on shit like that but um i think it's a it was a cool experience the demo um i'd like to finish the demo i i, I died a couple of times and but um I don't know. It, it was pretty cool, um, but it's on the indie game watch. If if that's the kind of genre you, you like and you want to always, you know, you want to explore and, and see um, what other games are out there that or that are inspired by the Soulsborne sort of. Uh, this looks like a game that was that was put together by a fan of the genre, definitely who has you know low resources and and you know, but those are the kinds of people that we like to talk to and like to support. So. Um, Estensel is the name of it. E S T E N C E L. A couple of other games to take a look at on our indie game watch. I'm going to put this one in the chat as well. Um, This one I thought was really freaking cool. And uh, I showed this to Andy and told him, please get these people on the show. It's called Gripper. Oh, yeah. I was looking at this before we started the show. It looks yes, yes, so yes. fucking cool. Yeah, this is a motorcycle action game. Yeah. Um, Where you literally, you know what? I'm going to, let me see if I can. You know, pull up the trailer. I'm going to put it on this screen. Oh, my God. It's just so, so we loud. can. We, I know it, it, it's very loud. <laughs> um, window capture at source. Let's see. You guys can vamp while I do this. That would be oh my god. Dope. Oh, so while you're doing that, I'm gonna I'm gonna throw two more games on my game list this week. Do it. Um, 
again, I'm still playing Chained Echoes. Fucking love that game. It's a shame that no one's talking about it. So is it just like a straight up throwback or does it have like a unique mechanics to it? I think I mentioned the whole overdrive thing last week about like, you know, that whole like balancing act between if you use too many abilities at once, right. defending, you like overheat and then you take more damage and then your your defenses suck. But Matt, if you like old school RPGs, you're going to love this game. Okay, so and, um, I have... um. <laughs> I have Gripper on here now, so... Oh, shit, that is loud. Okay, here we go. Yeah. So if you want to take a look at it, it is very high-paced, crazy action game where you are riding a motorcycle going around killing bad guys. It looks really dope. Um, And the press release for the game... So this is coming out Q1 this year. Um, No official release date yet, but the press release actually said, if you want to interview the creator, hit us up. So I'm like, Andy... Get him on. Let's get hardcore Just on here. Start bothering people. Hardcore is the, the developer year. and the publisher. So oh, look how good that looks. Too. It looks it dope, man. It looks like a yeah. really cool game. Um, I want to play the hell out of it. It look. It reminds me of like. It reminds me of something that um uh ah uh, fuck um. Returnal mm-hmm. people. Uh, the Returnal mm-hmm. people. Why am I blanking? Uh, House uh, Mark. House Mark. It looks like something like House Mark would would put out back it, in the PS3 days. Some of some of the screens remind me of that game. I mean, I know it's not that type of a game, but uh, Fury. Do you remember that? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Fury's yeah. dope. Yeah, yeah. Game. Yep. Absolutely. Uh, former guest of Dual Screens Podcast. Yep. Uh, yeah. You didn't know great. that. Don't say yep like you knew. You I didn't did know that. Know that. You didn't I know interviewed it. them the first year that I was with you guys. You don't, know, sh- you don't know shit about fuck, my man. I know shit about <laughs> fuck. <laughs> I don't fuck about shit. I don't know um, about Dangle. But yeah, game looks dope, and we're going to get them on the show. So keep that on your radar. If you like super cool action game with many good explosions. I am legit going to say, hey, your press release set to bother you. Come on the show. That's my, that's my, that's my sales pitch. Nailed it. Right. Here, well, we can look at Meat Madness, too. There's your meat hole. Uh, there you go. The there you go, kick. folks. There's your meat Guys, hole. If you want to look at it? meat holes. It's... Before no, no, no. We go... You got to go. You got to go. To, you have to go to the image. Here's the textures. The yeah. There's the ground beef textures. <laughs> the... The, the wall of ground beef on this ground beef planet. Literally just, literally it's just, just, it's just beef. photo of ground beef warped around a shape. It's You'll so love good. to see it. You'll love to see it. Andy, you were saying something before I went back to, um, oh, before I, I went back to Gripper. Yes, I started playing something on the train ride to work this morning. Oh, I'm so, oh God. Okay, go ahead. Marvel Snap. Marvel Snap. Oh, oh yeah. you okay. Did okay. All you right. Took the dive. It was sit- it's been on the phone for weeks and I okay. just finished Midnight Suns not too long ago. Okay. So you got the like, Marvel itch. I, ha- I had the Marvel card itch burrowed deep in my brain. Okay. I can't wait. And I and I was like, "Oh, I forgot the headphones today. So I can't have music and a podcast. Okay, what's on the phone?" And I was like, "Oh, well, it's right here." Mm-hmm. And I pulled it up and I'm like, "Okay, what's what's all what's all the hubbub? What's all the fuss? What's all the hoopla?" Mhm. Like, okay, I'm my nipples here. are hard with anticipation. Like, right now. I, I was like, <laughs> I'm so excited. I'm ready, man. I'm ready. Oh, I was like, okay, Nick Fury, Thanos, cool. All right. Oh, that's neat. Like, you have to capture two of the spots. Oh, then the spots do do things. Okay. Oh, then like things activate. Oh, then there's energy. Mm-hmm. Oh, look, my, my card is 3D now. I can do that with my phone and shit. Yeah. Yeah, you and can. Then, and then I yep. went in a and then I went in a tunnel and I wanted to cry because I couldn't mm. play anymore. Yep. 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 So it's it's on, it's happening, it's now gonna be a Oh, Andy died. Regular part of my day. There he is. He's Are you fucking happy, both of you? Are you, uh, are you fucking Andy, happy, both of you? I will be happy <laughs> when you <laughs> Do something so cool that you can't help but tell us in in the Discord. Okay. Which, by the way, you can join folks by going to patreon.com slash dual screens and joining for just $1. You get into our super secret Discord. You can hang out with us and talk about things. All right. I have another game here to talk about on the um, uh, the Indie Game Watch. Uh, this game is called One Military Camp, and it is made... All right, I'm I'm just gonna I'm gonna play it here so that you guys. Oh can wow, watch look it. at this! But it is a basically it's like a sim game, very very uh, uh, not unlike uh, two point campus and stuff where you're building an army base, but it's very silly. It's it takes 
war and makes it goofy and kind of pokes fun at all at it all and and the you know jar heads and like all that stuff um i don't know i looked at it and i'm like oh i could definitely see myself having a lot of fun doing this but it's a sim game it's you're building a military base and training people and building buildings and building your camp and then sending them out on missions during the war and, and stuff like that it just it seems really cool and, and it actually looks really well made too um it, it's from uh abby light barcelona also, it's also a former guest of the show yes did, did we have our abby light barcelona we had was, abby light i know we had abby light uh, studios which is yes, the, the publisher, publisher. Eh, the same people yeah so yeah uh, they're, they're all based in spain yeah yeah um really cool looking game um and I am definitely going to get this game. It is planned. It's planned releases next month. Um, there is a private beta which you could a- ask for, ask for accent access to. Um, but looks dope, and it's something you should keep on your radar. So, yeah. Uh, again, it's called One Military Camp, mm-hmm. not Two Military Camp. Not Two. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it not does two. look pretty interesting. Uh, it seems like it has a lot of the. So I like those like very deep survival base building like Rim World and um settlement survival and banished. And it looks like it's taking that formula mm-hmm. and uh applying it like comically to yeah. the military base, which is pretty rad. Yeah. Definitely gonna check this out. It doesn't take itself seriously, which I think like if you're make like this game could go one of two ways. Like you could either get stuck making something that is all about oh, I need my troops to send them on the missions, but this feels more like mobile ish and not in the bad way more yeah. like you know i it's, hope it, it doesn't takes, it takes the mash approach to war yeah yeah, yeah. i hope it doesn't have the uh <laughs> tropings of like a mobile game where you know, you know cut I this time in half that, with the gold piece you know i was gonna say that it, the ui and some of the different pieces do make it look like mm-hmm. it could have some like mobile equivalency but they without playing it it's hard to, hard to know yeah All right, let's get into the Indie News Report. There are three items on our Indie News Report. Andy, uh, why don't you take us into that last one, the one that you put in there, because there's no hyperlink, Mm. so I'm not going to open it, but why don't you you take that one? Oh, super easy, super Mm -hmm. simple, straightforward. Chasing Static, former guest of the show. Mm -hmm. Uh, Uh, All three, I believe, on on our Indie News Report. They are. All three are former guests of the show. That's kind of nuts. Did you do that on purpose, Steve? I did not. I don't think he did. <laughs> I did not. <laughs> we just have that far of a reach. Um, if you look at everything, um, if you look at the Indie Game Watch, uh, two of those were, right? Two of the Indie Game Watch were former guests, or was it just the mm-hmm. one? I think Matt. it was two, right? Matthew. Uh, yeah, we, Andy. We have spoken to a lot of fucking developers. I know <laughs> where. I know. It's true. At, at one point, we'll, we'll know them all. <laughs> yep. Um, so chasing static. Yeah. Um, why don't yes, you remind everybody a, what that is? It's an amazing, uh, again, lo-fi PS one, crunchy first person horror game. Uh, mm-hmm. your dad dies, you go to see him, his you know, at the funeral and then spooky shit goes down and, um, it's a very short, like four hour horror game. Um, out on PC and consoles like a while ago, but now it's on switch. Great game for the switch. I would say pick it up cause it's, it's a gem of a horror game. Dope. Uh, sticking into the horror genre, System mm. Shock, mm. former guest of the show as well. Do we have a release coming very soon? Question oh, mark. God, please. Is it possible? Um, this one is uh, comes directly from uh, the developer, um, Night Dive Studios. Uh, they posted an update in their Kickstarter campaign. Um I'll just read it real quick is from the, for the new year. This came on January 2nd. Um, after our return from Gamescom, we've been hesitant to share anything, not to spoil any remaining surprises we have in store. However, we've picked a few uh, last things to share before our quickly approaching launch window of March, 2023. Ooh. Oh, yeah. 
Um, as some of you already pointed out, this is not our first time announcing a tentative launch window, but over the past few years, much has changed. The scope and scale of the project has evolved dramatically, and with the pri- with Prime Matter joining the project, it's enabled us to focus on quality of life improvements, bug fixing, and localization support. The last major step towards releasing a game where all incredibly proud of this has also given us time to go back and polish various aspects of the game that needed the extra shine including variants effects and features um so then they just give like an update on some of the features going on show some pictures and all that stuff so it looks like march you know we may be getting this thing very soon q1 it is is the target here important to note uh, a little bit further down, as you know, dismemberment has been a high priority for us, and every single enemy is mm-hmm. receiving a completely custom dismemberment model. Yeah, I am. Yeah, I am it's way like into that. Legit shooting off the wings of a pterodactyl yeah. with, a, with a handgun, and I love it. Oh my god, it's so good. Did you any, either of you this. play the original System Shock? I, I have. played very little of it, uh, but yeah, I did play it. Yeah, I have, I have. I did not. So it's an undertaking to remake this game, and yeah. you know, you're going back. This is like the great great grandfather, like Bioshock. Like this was like the one that did it, and this gave us like one of the most terrifying video game AIs ever. Mm. So seeing it now, like reborn, remade, I am so thrilled. They were back on the show like four years ago. I want to say it was Nintendo a while. It was screens. a long time. Yeah, it was Nintendo episode screens, number yeah. one nineteen. That that that's what a guest page does. It gives you the numbers. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's been a while. Dualscreens.com. So, click on guest hosts. You can see all of our previous so interviews. Hopefully, we'll get him back on the show before March because I want to get him back and see like what's going on, what's changed, and thank you for making the game look so sexy. Yeah. Um. So, uh, f- we had a uh conversation maybe a month and a half ago about uh video game donkeys indie publishing company uh big mode and they have announced their title their title uh has been announced uh it is a 2d platformer this is coming from destructoid um I'll just go down here and read it a little bit. Uh, YouTube personality video game donkey has made a name for himself on the internet with the game reviews uh, um where is the actual shit about the game? Okay, here it is. It's a little over four four months since Donkey's initial... Wow, has it been that long? Four months we had that conversation? Yeah. Holy yeah. crap. Uh, now he's officially uh, unveiled his first publishing partnership. Big Mode will publish a game called Animal Well. Animal sounds, Well. Sounds familiar, you Animal guys. Well, former <laughs> guest of the show. A Metroidvania-inspired 2D puzzle platformer. Donkey disclosed his deal with the game's developer, Billy Basso, former guest of the show. Uh, Dual Screens Podcast, you can find that now on YouTube.com slash Dual Screens TV, or you can listen to it on your favorite podcast service of choice. Billy Basso, great guest. A lot of fun. Uh, in his newest YouTube video, Donkey's Best of 2022, he says that the game is, quote, one of the few at E3 2022 that caught his eye. Uh, yeah, it caught our eye, too. That's why we had him on the show. So suck it. <laughs> if, wow. we, if we if we had money, we would have published it first. All right. <laughs> suck on that, Donkey. Wow. Suck on it, Donkey. It's <laughs> an impressive level. Also, yeah, maybe we should get him on the show. We have we have the end now. Video game donkey. So well, Billy now we is going gonna to be at PAX East. Oh, so Billy! We, we, we I want you to I want you to email him mm-hmm. with a clip of, of the this? last forty five seconds. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, can yeah. he can he come Somebody on the show? That, show please. him this. Can you yeah. Ask Donkey to come on our show. Here, yeah. Here's why. Yeah. You were our, you were our friend first. <laughs> <laughs> you were my friend first. I mean, we believed in your game before anyone else, including yourself. <laughs> uh, mailbag, nothing. Nothing. <laughs> nothing. I saw, some, I saw some activity in oh, there. There was no? some stuff in there. I, I, I mean, thought. there's a comment, and you, we were speaking about the game earlier, right? Uh, so Mikey Kirsch says, not a question, but I wanted to shout out Chained Echoes. Uh, released late last month, solo dev, dev making a JRPG, which we spoke about on our last week's show. Uh, heavily inspired by Final Fantasy VI, gorgeous pixel art, with a fun take on turn-based combat system. And not a big JRPG fan, but this game has me absolutely hooked. Uh, Farmer Pete had some had some words about Sports Story, saying it was good, but at sometimes frustratingly broken. 
Um, that's upsetting. I'm really I very upset. specifically I'm really, I'm asked really a mad. question, Steve. Um, you asked a question. Oh, yes, from Missed Enough. Steve, why are you, you are so crazy? <laughs> that's exactly how I wanted you to do that. <laughs> uh... Yeah, so again, you could uh, write to us, you could talk to us. There, there's no answer to that question. I mean, it's pretty evident right now. Um, we have a question in the comments right here on twitch.tv slash dual screens streams from Sonny Rads, out one of our editors Ooh. on dualscreens.com. What indie game are you most excited for to release this year? Currently, oh, probably boy. 80s too, but it's only because I don't mm. really have a crazy... We don't have like a crazy outlook for what 2023 is going to be. Yet. Silk song. Mm. Mm, yeah. That's the thing that's happening this year. Sea of stars. Oh is Lies of P an indie game? Yeah. Um, I think my answer might be um, um, uh, the Soulstone Rogue game. Oh, really? Because that's supposed mm. to come out this year. Like I think they said mm. it's it's gonna mm. be a this year thing. And I love Soulstone Survivor so much. I would really like to see what an action RPG roguelike would look yeah. like from that. Because the screenshots from it give definitely the same like Diablo E yeah, vibe. Exactly. For sure. And um, yeah, I agree. Definitely on my list. Sons of the Forest is another gigantic one for me. I can't fuck like I can't tell you how much fun I've had with the forest in the past like month and a half. It is the most engrossed in a survival game i've ever been and like it is just so fun and i cannot wait for sons of the forest i'm gonna open up my wish list while we're vamping a little bit oh a hundred percent it's not even no question my answer to this is wrestle quest no fucking question about it that's it's wrestle quest i forgot i've been trying to just ignore it as much as i can because i'm my nipples are like it not just hard my nipples You're- are weapons. Like, they are martial art weapons for this game. What's up with your nipples getting so much... It is uh, exciting. It, it, is, a, it is an exciting time to be an indie game fan. It really exciting is. It's time to be one of your two nipples as well. <clears throat> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, just to talk about a couple other things, we have Below the Stone coming out this, this year. Yeah, um, I'm really excited to dig into that. Uh, we have, uh, can let I, me see. Can, I, can I just say what else is coming out this year? Oh, fuck. Power Cord. Oh, my God. That game does look like it's Power Cord's coming out in two weeks. Yeah. What? Yeah. Wait, dude, hold on. Yeah. R- rewind, though. Does, uh, oh, fuck, I don't even my mind is blown right now. Does WrestleQuest have a release window yet? No. Damn. They are is going it... to announce something very soon. I believe that's what they said on their, when they were last interviewed. Um, but yeah. Wrestle Quest, I will. Oh, I cannot Wonder wait. Wonder Twins that. activate. Not, <laughs> nine nine years of shadows <laughs> is coming. Oh out this yeah. Year. <gasps> and Rena and Jericho is also coming out this year. Oh yeah. Exophobia is a coming lot out. Of, a lot of good shit, you guys. There's too much stuff, guys. Iron Meat's coming out this year. Come on, there's so Matt, much good shit. Did you put Exophobia on your on your wish list? I know you did. Did I? No, you did, buddy. That's the Doom like game, Exophobia. You better better be on your list. That's oh, coming out February. Oh, I fucking forgot about that game. Yeah, yeah. Also, Trick Shot is listed as coming soon. Could we count that as a 2023? There's too many. I games. mean, soon would be. There's dirty. too many games. There's too many games. Too many games. Too many games. Speaking of too many games, Ova Steve. Magica is supposed to come out this year too. There's a lot. I don't want. It's a lot. Why are, why are we doing this? We there's, could do a whole show on just this. There's, Tune there's in next two, week for just this. There's two <laughs> more games that are coming out at some point, not this year, but in other years in the future mm-hmm. on Kickstarter.com. Steve? Oh, yes. Great segue. <laughs> hey. Wow. <laughs> Kickstarter, hey, hey. Kickstarters of the week. Because I found a couple that were interesting that um, I think I might actually back. Um, so the first one is My Tiny Game Studio. Which is exactly what it sounds like. Uh, please, uh-huh. please keep scrolling because there is English on their Kickstarter page. You just have to scroll to the second section. We of are it. soon to in scroll. It scroll is very English. Germany. Into um, theme aus Deutschland. Yeah, Deutschland. Um, so it is a. Oh, let me put the uh, window capture on so you can see it. Okay, cool. Move that up a little bit. Let's move this thing a little bit. Well, how aggressive German is just from the get-go. 
Yeah, totally. Because of the because of the aggression, you know. <laughs> there we go. All right. Um, so yeah, you you make video games. Remember Game Dev Story, the mobile game. Do you remember that? Did you play I Game do. Dev Story? Game Dev Story was dope, and this reminds me a lot of it. Um, features: create your own games, earn money uh, from them to expand and improve your development studio, evolve and experience the changes, the changing times in the in the game. Today, you're still working on text adventures. Tomorrow, 3D graphics. So you start with like text adventures. You get to choose what you're going to develop on, whether it's consoles, Game Station, Game Square, Game Girl, computer, smear phone, smear phone. What is, does that an E? Oh, it's it an A. Okay, it's smart. so smart. It just looks weird. There's, there's like a gap there. It looked weird. Um, phone. Yeah, it looked it looked weird. Um, so yeah, this thing uh, is has nine days to go. It's at three thousand dollars of its ten thousand dollar goal. So you could check that one out if you'd like to. Um, close that. Um, the other one that I saw that was Wait, actually waiting. Pause. Pause. Stop. I'm just curious yes. if we have similar recommended games because can you guys scroll down to the bottom of the game creator Kickstarter page? Sure. It's, it's we just, also we, recommend. We, right. So what's the first game on that list that you guys have? Art Slime. What's the third game on that list that you have? Room of Depression. <laughs> no, we also recommend for me. <laughs> uh, Hold on. I have to read this. Sands of Doom. Which is not, it's a tabletop. I don't have that. Room of Depression. Room of Depression, a game to experience depression. (laughs) Is the title. (laughs) Oh, that's terrible. It's probably trying to like, I bet it's like trying to help. Yeah, and I click on it and I scroll down and there's like a hand that's like sinking in quicksand and it's the most tragic thing. (laughs) Okay. Compared to the actual funding they got so far, but still, this looks sad. Why? So and the name just gets you. So I saw this other one, but I clearly didn't scroll down f- oh, far enough. You homo. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a game called Spellbinders. Let's put this up. I saw this because you know me. I like a good pixel art RPG, you know, <laughs> and you scroll down a little bit. Uh, they have a very detailed breakdown of what they are going to use the money for. Oh boy. Down to the do- oh, yeah, down to the <laughs> dollar. Me, Steven. Um, spell- it's a group of humans something. trying to harness the power of a particular element to manipulate their will. Fire, ice, whatever. Yeah, okay. So there's Lanny. There's your characters. Bio, water, spell. I was like, oh, cool. Like elemental bent. You know, whatever. Great screenshots and all that stuff and then so and then there's That's this cool re- character design great character design world yeah. looks really really fun and you then there's a- this what the hell's going on here <laughs> you have you can enjoy exciting sexy the, the not safe for work yaoi scenes enjoy exciting sexy <laughs> not safe for, for work yao yaoi scenes you can, you can totally I like, like- I like that i like that the top is all like fantasy stuff. And yeah, then what that's happened just, here? That's just, two, that's just two half naked dudes in like a modern. You bedroom. can you can totally like you know grind on not Titus's you know schlong. That, it, come on, it's retail price is ten grind bucks. Out your levels. It's coming out and in December. Dicks. Yeah, apparently, <laughs> apparently. Um. Anyway, game looks cool. Didn't realize it was gonna have a little sexy time stuff in oh, it. Oh boy. But uh, two hundred thirty dollars over the three thousand four hundred and two dollar goal, very specific number. Twenty seven days to go, and that is going to do it for our Kickstarters of the week. It was a light showing for Kickstarter. I I browsed a long I time. In I case you like, couldn't I tell, like, I feel like video game <laughs> Kickstarter is like really on the on the the decline. You know what's not on the on the decline in Kickstarter? That Tabletop dick. shit and oh, card okay. games. <laughs> And board games. That we're, shit is just very, inundating. Very different directions. And that guy's pee pee is <laughs> yeah, and that bulgous. <laughs> yeah, no. Bul- bulgous. Board game Kickstarter is like taken off. It's crazy. Yeah. Um, that's gonna do it for this episode of Indies Nuts Podcast. Thank you so much for joining us. Again, support us on patreon.com slash dual screens. It's the best way to uh, stay in touch with us throughout the week. Uh stay tuned uh for the latest episode of the Dual Screens Podcast, which will be edited tomorrow and posted up on our youtube.com slash dual screens TV and on your podcast service. Thank you so much for watching and listening. Andy, thank you for being here. Matt, I'm glad we could get your computer up and running. It, it's yeah. always fun having you on the show. Thank you, listeners, thank you, viewers, and as always, please be excellent to each other.